In this video, we will see the position and the orientation of a rigid body. We will start with the position. How to represent the position of a rigid body? Here we have a rigid body and a reference frame. So what we do is we assign a point, an arbitrary point on the rigid body. And we represent the position of this rigid body through the position of a point that is fixed to the body. In this case, this position vector will be OP. How many coordinates are needed to represent the position? If we are in two dimensions, we need two coordinates, as we saw before, which are two degrees of freedom. If we are in 3D, we need three coordinates, because we have three degrees of freedom for the position in 3D. There are several forms of representation, for example, Cartesian, cylindrical or spherical coordinates. First, the Cartesian coordinates, which are the most obvious ones. We have here the reference frame, we have the point P, and we have the coordinates X, Y, and Z, which gives a vector. Then we have cylindrical coordinates. For cylindrical coordinates, we do the projection of this vector on the X, Y plane, and we define this theta angle here, and we define the length of the projection vector, which is rho. And we use this rho, this angle theta, and this height z to represent cylindrical coordinates. We can make some relations, we can establish relations between these two coordinates from a geometric point of view. You can do it by yourself, and we get this. This is a relation from cylindrical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, and this is from Cartesian coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. We also have spherical coordinates, where we use this length r, we use this angle phi, and we use this angle theta. And we represent it as r, theta, and phi, where r is going to be always positive. This angle theta is going to be just from 0 to pi, so from here to roughly here, and phi is going to be from 0 to 2 pi, so it can go all the way around. The relation with Cartesian coordinates can be again obtained in a geometric way, and we get this relation. This is from the spherical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, and these equations go from Cartesian to spherical coordinates. With cylindrical coordinates, we have this. This is from spherical to cylindrical, and this is from cylindrical to spherical. Now, here be careful, because we call in spherical coordinates theta this angle, but in cylindrical coordinates, the angle theta is this one, so that's why here I put theta sub c. Then let's see the orientation of a rigid body. How do we represent the orientation of a rigid body? Again, we have this reference frame and we have the body, and in this case it has some orientation. What we do is we assign a reference frame to this body, and then we represent the relation between this frame and this frame. And the relation between frames is going to define the orientation of the rigid body. So that's why we will be interested in defining the relations between frames. How many coordinates do we need for the orientation? In two dimensions, we just need one coordinate because we only have one degree of freedom. In three dimensions, we need three coordinates, as we also saw before, because we have three degrees of freedom. In general, in n dimensions, we have n times n minus 1 divided by two coordinates. You can check this formula by replacing 2 and 3 and seeing that we are getting these numbers. In general, orientation is not as straightforward as position. The problem of orientation is the topology of the space that describes the orientation. This space is not Euclidean. For example, you can recall this sphere, which is the surface of a 2D sphere in the 3D space. We could represent this, for example, with latitude and longitude, but then we run into problems when we, are, when we get to the poles, because there are singularities. We have some similar problem in the orientation, but in this case it's not a 2D sphere, but it's rather a 3D sphere, so the problems are even more severe. To represent the orientation, we have the rotation matrix, which is an implicit representation and gives constraints because we use more parameters than the needed ones. And one related concept here are exponential coordinates, which we will cover also in a later video. We have some parameterizations of orientation. We have the axis angle representation, which uses three parameters and is minimal and is somehow equivalent to exponential coordinates. We have Robbio angles, which has three parameters and is also minimal. We have Euler angles, which also has three parameters and is also minimal. These are minimal because they use three parameters and orientation has three degrees of freedom in the space. 
And we also have quaternions. Quaternions have four parameters, so this is not minimal. It is an implicit representation because it has four parameters, but we have one extra constraint. 